hugs to turn him into a murderer. And now another author named Philip Strongman, who's written a number of uh, you know highly uh, popularized books, um, you know, uh, on music, ended up writing a book about John Lennon himself. And he concluded that uh, he had the same conclusion basically as Fenton Bressler, but he added that the doorman that night at Lennon's apartment was also a CIA asset. He'd been working as a Cuban asset for a decade. He was involved in the a Cuban Missile Crisis and, uh, and many other operations, and he actually aided that assassination of John Lennon that night. And it was due to the fact that it Lennon fit the general course of how the CIA dealt with very popular musicians. They first manipulated them to start using drugs, got them to popularize those drugs. But when then those musicians started sobering up and getting more into activism, they then had to do them in, and that's what they did to John Lennon. And I argue that's what they did to uh, Kurt Cobain, Tupac Shakur, and Jimi Hendrix. Wow, very, very interesting. And listen, we're almost out of time, but I want to hold sir. you over. I want to go to break and sure. let, let's come Great. back because let, I want to talk about Jimi Hendrix, the death of Jimi Hendrix, that uh, what is an MI6, uh, MI6 agent mm -hmm. that was his manager, might have been right. responsible for his death. Also the death of Kurt Cobain and my friend Larry Pinckney, who is a member of the original Black Panther Party. I'm sure he would want me to ask you about the Black Panthers as well. So once again, the book is Drugs as Weapons Against Us. And I'm talking with author John Potash and the InfoWars Nightly News will return right after this. So stick around. And all you ISIS people threatening us, hey, we're not a French newspaper, okay? We got people that have taken your asses out in this building right now. We're armed to the teeth, and we're not scared. You got that, you sons of bitches? This is Texas. You want to threaten me, you can go straight to hell. You understand that? Never water yourself down just because someone can't handle you at 100 proof. It's the Alex Jones Show, because there's a war on for your mind. The knowledge of the ancients, tried and true, trusted herbs and extracts fused with the latest nutraceutical science. Introducing the all new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. For the last two years, our team has been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to develop the ultimate nutraceutical formulation. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit ancientdefense.com or call 888-253-3139. That's ancientdefense.com. Break down why you're so proud of these filters. Well, I mean, this, this, the Alexa Pure is really a culmination of all of my experience. It was posed to me as an extremely challenging uh, project. Uh, they wanted a product that would actually operate without any electricity, so it had no pressure. You had to do it all by gravity, and they needed... They really effectively said we need everything imaginable to be removed efficiently, way higher than 99%. And so the result was, it, it was it, it's an like extreme challenge. I uh, worked on it uh, for quite a long time. And basically what we've done is we created a, the only filter, to my knowledge, that hits all three. It will remove effectively all the major uh, metals, uh, all the major non-metals such as fluoride, it will take out uh, all known microbiological threats, including viral, bacterial, and cysts. And it will take out uh, organic chemicals of pretty much everything, with, with, without exception. It's a very, very powerful device. I don't believe that there's anything else out there in the world that can do that, especially under gravity flow conditions. The fit and finish are fantastic. No, no compromise was made on the quality of the uh, c construction. Um, so, I mean, it's really a, a remarkable achievement on their part, and uh, I feel very proud, actually, to be part of the team that put that together. Uh, what's your view overall on fluoride? 
Well, okay. So we actually tested against both the fluoride ion and the fluorosilicate that you mentioned, which is the additive that people put into water uh, under federal control. And basically, uh, we removed both of them with equal efficiency. So we wanted to be sure that no matter how fluoride is added to the water, it can be intercepted and removed. Um, so that's how we've dealt with that. All I can tell you is that we tested against all known fluoride chemicals that are added to water, the new ones and the old ones, and uh, we removed them all of equal efficiency. And it's your belief that this is the best gravity-fed filter of the design out there available to the public? Uh, without a doubt. I mean, most of these uh, gravity flow filters are at best uh, simple particulate filters. They remove dirt and, and uh, debris, sediment. Uh, they're not going to be capable of intercepting a viral particle. Uh, to the degree, we're talking quantitative reduction below detection. You know, no one can touch that kind of capability. Well, I'm impressed, and I want to thank you so much for your time today. It is the Alexa Pure Pro family of water filtration systems available, uh, discounted exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. I want to thank uh, Mr. Redhawk for allowing us to be part of the launch of this. Um, it's on sale right now for their main unit, $177. Leading competitors that aren't even as good or more than that. And they've also got uh, the, the survival spring uh, type straw system for survival uh, that uh, is an absolute must have. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Author John Potash is back with us. And we are talking about in a very important subject the U.S. intelligence agencies introduction of drugs into our society and the continued drug trafficking into America. And we we're just before break, we were going to talk about the death of Jimi Hendrix. I understand his manager was an MI6 agent and he supposedly admitted to killing Jimi Hendrix. What's, what's that all about? Yeah, well, basically Jimi Hendrix didn't get big in the United States. He got big in England. And when he started getting very big, it was obvious, uh, according to many British musicians, that he was an, an unbelievable guitar player. And so when he got, uh, he, he started soaring in Britain, and under, under an agent, uh, uh, basically a guy named Mike Jeffrey, entered his life and, and had all kinds of connections. And I argue inserted himself as Jimi Hendrix's manager because no one else could handle his uh, soaring fame. But uh, Jimmy, he, Mike Jeffrey ended up admitting that he was an MI6 agent in the past, and, and he pretended like he left MI6, but all the evidence shows that he actually continued his work with, for, for MI6 undercover. And he proceeded, after Jimi Hendrix was already getting very big, he proceeded to start to sabotage Jimi Hendrix's career, um, having him fly uh, one you know all across the country in between gigs, and um, was having censoring some of his music, not having him put out albums when Jimi Hendrix wanted to put out many more albums. And uh, Jimi Hendrix couldn't take it. He tried to fire Mike Jeffrey, but Mike Jeffrey um, did all kinds of things to stop that. So Jimi Hendrix finally fired Mike Jeffrey, and within 48 hours, he died. And so a roadie for Jimi Hendrix ended up coming out with a book within the last few years, a guy named James uh, Tappy Wright, who said that Mike Jeffrey actually admitted when he was drunk to having Hendrix killed. And so I show the evidence and the reasons for that being that Jimi Hendrix ended up becoming very political after Martin Luther King's assassination. And at that point, he started supporting the Black Panthers and uh, talking about them in interviews and saying, uh, dedicating his last album to the Black Panthers and started uh, forming political plans, according to his fiance, Monica Daneman, Monica Daneman, who wrote about it in a book she came out with uh, a year before her death. And um, so it just, it show all the evidence that, you know, uh, it was another case of U.S. and British intelligence this time, cl collaborating with U.S. intelligence to um, use a musician to popularize drugs. But then when they started sobering up and all accounts had Jimi Hendrix sobering up, um, they then did him in when they got, it started sobering up and getting more into activism. Wow, very interesting. And, and you also mentioned the Black Panthers. A very good friend of mine, Larry Pinckney, who was a member of the original Black Panther Party. He was also a victim of COINTELPRO and a political prisoner for 10 plus years. And we actually got our hands on his FBI profile through the Freedom of Information Act, 
where it stated that they considered Larry Pinckney a threat because get this, his ability to unite people of all color. So once again, that's more evidence that the, you know, the establishment, they, they really want us divided, they don't want us united. And so how did the, the, what about the rest of the Black Panthers? How did they use drugs against them? Well, the founder, the national founder of the Black Panther Party, that was Huey Newton. Yeah. And undercover agents got involved in his life just after he was let out of jail and brought cocaine to him and all other drugs to him and got him uh, messed up on the drugs for a bit. And um, according to John Stockwell, they, they uh, targeted him with psychological warfare for his entire life until his death in 1989. And all the evidence uh, around his death suggests that it was a U.S. intelligence assassination. And um, they did the same thing to the New York Black Panther leader, Afeni Shakur. She was um, one of several of the Black Panther leaders in New York City. And uh, I showed the evidence that an undercover agent entered her life when she was at, at, a, at a beleaguered time of her life and kept giving her crack cocaine. And she got addicted to crack cocaine. And, and uh, she had been touring uh, college campuses nationwide, giving lectures, and it took her out of that kind of activism and, um, and hurt her life and hurt her son's life, uh, the rap artist Tupac Shakur. Okay, and then let's get into Tupac in a second, but first I was curious about Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. What did they have, sure. what did the establishment have against Kurt Cobain other than, what, 30 million albums that Nirvana sold? I mean, what on earth yeah. did they have against him? Yeah, again, it fits the profile of take a talented musician, manipulate him to popularize drugs, through, and then when he starts sobering up and turning on more to activism, uh, do him in. And that, you know, show all the evidence that that was the case with uh, Kurt Cobain. Now, a great new documentary, like a docudrama slash documentary called Soaked in Bleach, came out and presents uh, taped witnesses, uh, a top uh, pathologist saying that he's never seen a case where someone shoots up uh, a large amount of, of heroin and then proceeds to, to you know, shoot themselves in the head. He says in, he, this is an 80-year-old uh, top you know, pathologist who says it just doesn't happen. He's never seen it before. And uh, he says it was, there was many dubious uh, you know, decisions around Cobain's case pronouncing it a suicide the same day as they found his body, for example. And many other experts say the same thing about that. They didn't develop the pictures around his death for 20 years. And uh, experts say that the pictures could have said a lot about if someone else's uh, hand was around the gun besides Kurt Cobain's, it would have left, um, you know, an uh, empty space where the blood would have splattered on the, on the um, rifle. So there's just much evidence that actually Courtney Love, sadly enough, played a part in uh, orchestrating his murder. And, but the evidence goes much higher than that because of the fact that they're um, a police detective who spent many hours investigating as a murder instead of a suicide as the uh, supervisor of the investigation told his police to do, only called a suicide. He was the first uh, officer to die in about eight years on the uh, Seattle police force and he died um, while investigating Cobain's death as a murder instead of a suicide. And, uh, you know, somebody who said that um, Courtney Love offered him $50,000 to kill Kurt Cobain um, died uh, within days of saying that on camera. And he had passed a, a top polygrapher's test saying, you know, uh, with a 99% score that he was telling the truth about that. Wow. And you know, Joe Biggs here at work, he told me about that documentary, Soaked in Bleach, so I definitely want to check yes, that excellent. out. And there's a lot of that information about Kurt Cobain's death in your book as well. We got a minute, 20 seconds left. Uh, quickly, if you could talk about the laundered drug money that, that, mm -hmm. may, had to, that might have had to do with Tupac's death. Yeah, what, what Tupac was, was helping his Black Panther extended family get Bloods and Crips gangs, first in California, then across the country, to call peace truces. Now, these were the leading drug dealers in the country. And when they all started calling peace juices and actually turning one to activism and stopping their drug dealing, including the entire um, Latin King uh, gang membership, of about 3,000, that took vast amounts of money out of the drug traffickers' hands and out of the uh, lo money launderers' hands. And that uh, cost them you know, tens of billions of dollars. And that's why Tupac 
one of the reasons Tupac was such a concern to U.S. intelligence, since, as we said before, the CIA were the top drug traffickers.